leader of a church for more than two dozen years, making the transition to atheism is quite a shock to your flock, your friends, and your family. Jerry DeWitt knows all about that. Not only did he go bankrupt because of his loss of faith, but his wife left him. While the ride has been rough, it has also been interesting. However, his charisma helped him land a role as spokesperson for the organization known as Recovering from Religion in the Clergy Project. Since then, he has been featured on CNN, USA Today, and the New York Times. He has also made thousands of new friends. His story will soon be available as a biographical book thanks to a deal stuck with his publisher, DeCapo, of the Perseus Book Group. The proposed title is Hope After Faith, an ex-pastor's journey from belief to atheism. It's scheduled to come out in early 2013. You can order it via the link provided in the description. Evangelist Bill Keller has started his own campaign for president, but he is not the candidate, nor does he support Obama or Romney. No, he is behind Jesus H. Christ himself. By mid-August, he had received about 320,000 pledges from Christians who promised to cast their vote in favor of Christ. By the beginning of October, that number had grown to over one million. According to Keller, a Republican or a Democrat victory makes no difference. It's like Satan flipping a two-headed coin with his head on both sides. His position regarding Barack Obama and candidate Mitt Romney is not surprising either. In the case of the president, the pastor is typically critical of his stance on Israel, abortion, and same-sex marriage. As for the Republican candidate, not only does he not consider Romney to be a Christian, but he classifies the Latter-day Saints Church as a cult. According to Keller, Mormons are lying when they claim to be Christians, since Mormon doctrine is 100% inconsistent with Biblical Christianity, and a Mormon is no more Christian than Muslim is. Rabbi Bernard Rosenberg is the founder of Rabbis for Romney. He claims that his group counts numerous members, but doesn't want to say how many or identify them for fears of backlash. I don't want to happen to them what happened to me, said Rabbi Rosenberg. I've been attacked like you've never heard, by rabbis, by Democrats. I'm a registered Democrat. I voted twice for Clinton. I've also been a Republican. This has nothing to do with party politics. Meanwhile, a large number of rabbis have publicly given their support to the president. Right from the start, they advertised their numbers to exceed 613. What's so important about this number? That's how many commandments can be derived from the Torah. Forget about the Ten Commandments. There are 613 mitzvahs. Rabbi Rosenberg believes there shouldn't be any pro-presidential candidate rabbi group, but felt he had to create one for Romney because of the existence of the other one for Obama. I have nothing personally against Obama. I'm not one of those crazy people who hate him. I think it's just time for somebody else. People are out of jobs. It's time for a businessman. Meanwhile, David Harris, president and CEO of the National Jewish Democratic Council, jokes about the group, calling it a top-secret society. Rabbis for Obama is approaching 1,000 rabbis nationally who are proudly identifying publicly as supporting this president for all he has done for Israel and for all he has done to stop Iran. The optics of rabbis for Romney are a bit strange to say the least. The claim that there are at least a few dozen rabbis who support Mitt Romney, but we are not permitted to know who they are or from where they hail. It's just odd. Warren Jeffs and three of his followers were facing charges of bigamy. But since they were already convicted of other crimes, the assistant district attorney, Angela Goodwin, decided that in the interest of judicial economy, the state had to move to dismiss the indictment for bigamy. Jeffs is already serving a life sentence plus 20 years in prison for sexually assaulting two young girls, one 12 years old and another 15. According to the Texas Office of the Attorney General Spokesman Jerry Strickland, it's no secret that the resources of Schlechter County and points beyond have been stretched in the last few years. In getting over 120 years plus a life sentence on these four individuals, we felt it was appropriate to move forward instead of putting counties, jurors, and the others through this process once again. 